Elder. I've been uh, a part of the lived experience um, group for the last uh, year, but also been uh, affected by the, or in the process of the homelessness uh, in Niagara for about eight years now. I'm a firm believer that uh, sharing your story is so important to others, um, to let them know that they're they're not alone through this journey that others have been through there and, and have come out on top. So uh, the more we can communicate and, and let people know that uh, what's happening in the region with homelessness and the effects of it in the community itself, uh, I thought it was my duty and my honor to, to represent some of my friends that have been uh, struggling with this for so many years. So my story uh, started many years ago, uh, you know, back in, uh, I'm originally from St. John's, Newfoundland. Uh, so I guess my mental mental uh, illness started with uh, some childhood sexual abuse from the ages of 13 to 18. Uh, led me into, uh, you know, lack of self-confidence, uh, you know, shyness and, and stuff, and then eventually into alcohol. Uh, you know, looking back on that now, uh, you know, Ran into several problems when I cured my addiction. I became in mental health grew a lot worse with anger and stuff, and you know started going down the path of hurting family and friends that were caring for me, stealing from me, and and doing bad things, and and just to never get over the fact that um, I was struggling. I, I buried it so deep my past that you know there was days I thought I was just normal, but just. You know, just the struggle of carrying this weight with me for so many years. Um, finally came to a, a cracking point after a couple of stints in jail, and losing my family, my kids, my housing, everything. Um, I was just fed up and tired. Um, you know, I, I told my parents, my ex-wife, about my uh, childhood abuse, which, which was hard because, um, you know, dealing with shame and guilt and of not knowing how anyone would take it or understand it or, you know, being a, a man in a, in a hockey environment, and, you know, told to be tough and strong, but, uh, you know, we just bury it. Um, that led to, you know, the homelessness part of uh, losing everything and just um, walking into um, the hospital one day and just basically giving up on life. Um, spent three days in the hospital, got assessed, not much happened there. They just wanted to feed me with medications and said you'll be fine and stuff. But life drastically changed for me entering Southridge Shelter. Uh, it was May the 6th, 2013. Um, I pulled into the parking lot after leaving the hospital uh, to know where to go and, uh, you know, just sat there and cried for an hour and just said, you know, what does life come to? Um, you know, I had everything I ever wanted, ever needed, and here I was living out of my van. Um, Southridge uh, opened up their doors to me. I felt comfortable, served with dignity by staff there. Um, you know, I was embarrassed, full of shame and guilt, but they made me so comfortable um, in, in how they treated me as a human being. I just opened up and, and just let out my whole life story to them the first time to anybody outside my family. And, and I just, the relief was there. It, it was done. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I still struggle with mental health every day. Don't get me wrong. It, it's something, um, you know, from my sexual abuse, I got connected with counseling, uh, one-on-one, -on -one, which was great, but I found that the most, um, Critical thing for me to do uh, was counseling in a group setting, to know I wasn't alone, to sit with other men um, in my age group who struggled with this um, and affected their lives. Um, and since I've been a part of that group, I, I've uh, not so much taken it upon myself, but try to be open and honest about my journey uh, so I can help others. Um, to know they're not alone in this and, and to um, seek whatever um, help they need and be there for them um, when the need arises, when they're ready to open up and, uh, and to get that part of their life behind them. Um, you know, we have a slogan in Southridge, uh, friendships make the difference and uh, living, in, uh, living in community is better. And those are the two things that I bring out every day, right? Friendships make the difference. And life is better in community because that's that's saving grace for me. The title of my book, I, I, I've been thinking about this for years now. Um, I I'd like it to call it the SOS, you know, share our story. 
right? It's for so many years when I was struggling with my mental health, the shame and guilt of, of my past, the trauma I had been through, I held it in for years, you know, you know, actually 30 years before I came out. Um, and once I shared my story, the relief, the weight off my shoulders, the stigma of, of what I was going through didn't make it a, a row of beans anymore. I was like, I was set free. Um, so anyone that's reading this or, or watching it, like, you know, to share your story and, uh, and SOS, it's, I ended up at Southridge and to me, that was the lifeline that I needed. It's like someone threw me the, the boy in the water and said, Hey, we're going to save you. My role basically consists of, uh, engaging with, uh, you know, clients and friends that are in the Housing First and Home for Good program in the Niagara region. Um, basically, I, I'm a, I call myself a social butterfly. I, I get out and, and engage with people that are struggling, uh, whether they're um, living on the streets or just moving into their own place or in the shelter system. Just give them a, a sense to know that, uh, you know, they're not alone in this journey, that they're free to uh, vent, yell, scream, do whatever they need. Uh, to get them through today with me. Um, because most times, um, you know, as a peer support worker, I've been through a lot of things they've been through. So uh, giving them the understanding a bit about my background, hopefully we'll get them to, uh, you know, voice their opinions on what they need. And I can relay that on to case managers or to the appropriate people um, to get them the supports that they need. Um, a lot of my friends, I find that are very, uh, anxiety uh, and mental health issues when it, it comes to support. So, uh, you know, I'll go to doctor's appointments or psychiatrist appointments, dentist appointments with them just as a, uh, you know, as a, an emotional support for them so they, they can get through the trauma of doing something that they don't want to do or they, they don't know how to do. Um, so, yeah, so it's basically uh, working in a team environment with, uh, within the program and, um, and assisting our clients and friends the best we can to uh, make them get to a healthy lifestyle. I find peer support um, workers offer um, another support to our friends and clients more so in a friendship role, right? Where they're not to judge, we meet them where they are. Um, we don't, you know, be great them. We don't belittle them. We don't, you know, we're on an even field here. Um, and that gives them a sense of, um, you know, calmness, a sense of peace when, when we meet or we go out for coffee or we go out for lunch. They can be who they are, right? They don't need to be or act different because it's a professional they're speaking to or a medical doctor. They can just open up and be who they are. And, you know, right now, um, I see a need of increase in peer supports, whether it's uh, volunteers in groups or in the community just open communication in a community setting and just letting someone be their self. Let them feel like they're feeling loved or listened to. There's many times I sit there and listen for hours to someone just bent and scream and yell. And at the end of it, they go, thank you. I needed that. And I hadn't said a word. I just pay attention and listen. And, and that to me um, is so much needed for a lot of our friends. Um, you know, not even the vulnerable or the homeless, just so many people in general, is to find that peer, to find that person that you're comfortable with and just letting out how your day is going or letting out how your week is going and not be judged, right? And at the end of it, just like, whoa, I feel good. And to me, that's rewarding, right? Not that someone's beaten an addiction or someone's doing good. It's just for someone to know that they can vent right? And not be judged. And I walk away feeling like, well, I just got peer support from them as well. <laughs>